Are you thinking about joining the military, but you're not even really sure if you're going to qualify or you're a little iffy on whether or not you're going to qualify? Well, you're in luck because I'm going to talk through it right now to see if you're qualified for the military. Now, as a little background, I was a Marine Corps recruiter from 2013 to 2016. Actually did okay at it. Not going to talk accolades, but I didn't die. So here I am. Uh, now, so that being said, I am a little rusty and there might be some nuances as far as what's changed, but the major players and the major things are still the same. So we're gonna run through this real quick. All right, so the first one is you gotta pass the ASVAB. You have to get a 31 on the ASVAB, the Arms for Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery Test. I've got another video on that if you wanna check that out, but the ASVAB just requires a math and English score, and then you have to average 31, which means it's a percentage test, so you have to, or percentile test, so you need to be smarter than 30% of the people in the country, so ta-da. So study math, algebra, and English, you know, the language, uh, prior to taking the ASVAB, and you'll be totally fine, right? Just pay attention in high school, graduate. So you have to have a high school diploma or GED with 15 college credits or, you know, um, just a high school diploma, which is way easier than getting a GED and then getting 15 college credits. Um, homeschool diploma is a high school diploma. If you want to be an officer, you have to commission, you know, you have to do a bachelor's degree, but for just normal enlisted people, high school diploma, ASVAB, right? You got to pass that. So those are basic education requirements. And then we get into like the legal stuff. So there's a lot of, um, like they're going to ask you about drugs. So if you've done anything other than marijuana, it's a drug waiver that can be uh, waived, but there are certain drugs that they'll say no to. So be aware of that. Don't make bad decisions or, you know, whatever. Um, if it's pot, it's a little tricky depending on like if you're in Colorado or in somewhere where it's legalized. I'm sure that's kind of changing the game a little bit. But just know that marijuana will not disqualify you from the military. However, if you go up to MEPS within 30 days of smoking and you pop on the piss test. So they should give you a piss test in the office to make sure you're clean to go to MEPS. But if you fail the drug test at MEPS, like the actual military entrance processing station, medical, whatever appointment, if you fail that drug test disqualified. Now there are drug waivers um, and I know one guy, he was actually one of my recruiters who had one of those drug waivers but that was like a thing when they were really trying to plus up the military. Right now they're not going to waive that. They're going to say look you're an idiot. You, you knew this. Um, so just clean yourself up before then and then be honest with your recruiters about how many times you smoked. You know if you can't remember then I don't know speculate, guesstimate, whatever you got to do. Um, just know that depending on how much you did it like if you smoked like every day for 20 years like th there's going to be some potential drug waivers in there it might be a little bit harder to enlist you know someone who smoked like three times experimentally or whatever and didn't like it is a little different than someone who smoked four times a day for 10 years so um all right so all that being said crime uh, if you have a felony there is a waiver i've seen it approved once not easy try to stay away from felonies misdemeanors you know i think two to three it's a waiver but it's approvable anything higher than that becomes like a commanding general waiver and that's like borderline impossible to approve so Stay clean, you know, if you have like a minor in possession, it won't totally disqualify you depending on what the drug is. Um, a DUI won't necessarily disqualify you. They want to make sure that whatever you've got is cleared off your record, you're good, like, if it, and if it was just dismissed, they're not going to think of that as like, oh, it never happened. They're going to want to know why it was dismissed. Like, was it dismissed because there was no evidence or was it dismissed because you did like some thing with your attorney, right, and you were still guilty, right? Because if you punch someone in the face and then they just decided to press, not press charges, but you admitted to punching him in the face, like, you're still kind of guilty in the Marine Corps' eyes because you still did it? I don't know. Police waivers are a little different. It's going to be case by case, right? Best thing I can tell you is just stay out of trouble. So we've covered drugs. We've covered police. The medical stuff, right? This is the one that gets everyone. So there's also height, weight, depending on if you're, you know, what branch you're trying out for. That's going to be way different depending on the branch. But uh, don't be, like, anorexic and don't be, like, obese. Be in the middle. You know, if you're athletic, great. If you're not athletic, they'll make you athletic, but be healthy, be relatively healthy. All of this is designed to ensure that you don't get into a situation where you're serving in the military and you shouldn't be because of some kind of condition that would have, like, that you're gonna get hurt, right? They don't want you to have like a pre-existing heart condition, then you go to combat, you start running and your heart explodes, you die. Like, that's all, both a liability for the military and uh, not really fun for you. So we don't want you to die, believe it or not. Um, so the medical. Now, this could be a little different in every branch, the screening questions. For us, when I was a Marine recruiter, we used to use the acronym ICOMBAT VP, and I haven't 
gone through that acronym until like two seconds ago in my head. I didn't look it up. I went through it from memory, um, but I haven't done it, so if I'm a little rusty, I apologize. So this is how the question will go if you called into the recruiting office and I'm screening you out, right? Oh, hey, Johnny, blah, 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 blah. Um, cool, do you have any implants in your body anywhere? Any pins, bolts, screws, nuts, whatever? No? Okay, cool. How about contacts? You wear contacts or glasses? Great. All right. Uh, do they correct your vision to normal vision or are you still really hard of seeing? Okay, cool. We're looking to see. We want to make sure that your vision's correctable if you, you know, whatever. The implants question is to just kind of, you know, make sure if you had any major surgeries or whatever they come up. The third one is operations. If you had any operations, right, tell me about those. Like labrum surgery in your shoulder, that's a pretty, pretty rough one to get past. Knee surgery, like they're going to want to see full range of motion, completely cleared, completely healthy. I've seen ankle surgeries. Um, you know, common ones are like appendix. Okay, I've had my appendix out. That's a common one. That's, you know, whatever. Who cares? Gallbladder, I don't know. If you're missing a kidney, yeah, that's kind of a big one. Um, you know, so any kind of operations, right? Missing the testicles and no-go. Like, you got to be kind of, you know, we need to know about that. Because we're going we're gonna to find out, right? Like, if you're, if you're missing a testicle, they're going to know when you go to MEPS. Um, so just be honest with your recruiter. Next up is medication. And that's going to be... Have you currently, are you currently, or have you ever taken any medication, right? So if you used an inhaler, you know, three years ago, we want to know, was that bronchitis or did you have asthma? Because that makes a difference. Um, if you took, like, this is the one that kind of messes with a lot of people. Um, if you took depression meds, you know, depending on how long you were on them and why, and how long you were off them and how long you've been cleared, that may be disqualifier. Anxiety meds, same. ADHD and ADD meds, uh, those can be a total disqualifier. Um... It's going to depend on how long you took them and how long you've been off them. So, for example, they're going to want to see, I think it's less than two cumulative years after the age of 14 um, or that you stopped before then and they were able to function. Uh, if you took them all the way through college and then you just kind of stopped, like that's kind of going to be a red flag. Now, if you got took them for a little while or whatever and then you got into high school and you were like, I don't need these and you threw them out, like the doctor said you didn't need them, that's one thing. But if you just like were getting the prescription and just say you weren't taking it, Hopefully that wasn't a super weird cut, but uh, just in the name of transparency, what happened there was that uh, my SD card was full and apparently in the move, I, I couldn't find my USB. Anyway, had to go to Best Buy and grab an SD card adapter for USB to plug it in to get everything set up. So back to medications, right? Depression, anxiety, all of those things, uh, ADD, ADHD, like you can't be on those like prescription drugs when you join the military because they don't want you to be it's like an EpiPen like if you require an EpiPen then you're not supposed to join the military because if you're like on the front lines you get stung by something now you're a liability all because you forgot an EpiPen or whatever right so things like that uh, this is actually why uh, the super controversial topic about trans joining the military like I, I don't know that it really even matters because it would have to be somebody like successfully post op post procedure off all medication no issues no concerns and you know i mean like so that whole process of like the hormone like the medication itself would disqualify you at least for like the time being so um anyway hang on one sec let me i forgot my my notes and i'm gonna leave this up because i'm all about transparency so uh yeah so i covered drugs crime asvab so the next one would be so i combat v that was the m B is broken bones. Have you ever had any broken bones? And that kind of goes back to the pins and fractures. So we're trying to just like, we're asking questions in different ways to try to jog people's memory and make sure that we're not missing anything. The A is asthma or other breathing you know, issues. Maybe when you were a kid or you know, present, uh, if you had asthma, you were diagnosed with asthma, you had an inhaler, they're gonna wanna know about it. That can be a disqualifier depending on how bad it is. So just food for thought. Uh, the next one is tattoos. Yes, tattoos matter. Um, Services are changing policies all the time, but generally, at least for the Marine Corps, like you can't have tattoos on your hand unless it's a wedding ring. You can't have tattoos on your face, neck, behind the ears, you know, permanent eyeliner. Um, you can't have anything like in all the branches, anything like racist, extremist. Uh, you know, you can't be walking around with like anything just super explicit. Um, so you're going to want to know what those tattoos are that you have. Next one is vision, and that's, so we ask glasses and contacts. This is more like, hey, have you ever seen like, double vision, blurred vision, cross-eyed, stigmatisms, other vision is issues. 
Uh, and then the last one is psych. And so this is kind of the catch all for the like depression, anxiety, you know, whatever. Like, have you ever seen a psychiatrist? Have you ever wanted to kill yourself? Have you ever tried to kill yourself? Um, you know, and suicidal ideations is a disqualifier. Um, suicide attempts is a disqualifier. Uh, like th what they're trying to do is like going to boot camp and going to combat. It's not easy. So if you're not completely there, like stable mentally before you go through all that, like they're just setting you up for failures. So they're trying to weed out and make sure that the people who are going to boot camp and going to training are, are ready for it. Right. So some other disqualifying things. One would be uh, like age. So in the Marine Corps, you have to go to boot camp before your 29th birthday. Other services, I think, go up to 34. At one point, I think you could go higher than that in, like, the Guard and the Army with waivers. Um, just be mindful, like, even if the age limit is, like, 32, like, hey, look, I'm 31 now. I've been in the Marine Corps for 13 years. I can tell you uh, going in at 18 is a lot easier and a lot better than going in at, like, 31, right? Like, just a whole lot of weird adjustments that you're going to have to go through. So, um Parenthood, right? If you are a single parent, you are going to have to essentially give up custody of your kid in order, like, or if you're a guy, like, child support and, you know, whatever. You can't have custody as a single parent and go to boot camp. Now, if you're married, you know, whatever, or if you're, like, at boot camp and find out someone's pregnant, like, you know, it is what it is, but uh, they won't let you join if you have custody of a child unless you like give up custody of that child because again you're joining the military um that maybe if the reserve side maybe there might be some waivers for that but um so i mean the basic premise is this if you want to join the military stay in shape graduate high school stay out of trouble and just hold off on like the tattoos and permanent decisions that'll affect your life um that's pretty much it Right. Uh, let me know if you guys think I should do a video on like what to expect at MEPS, like the actual processing. I can give like the breakdown for uh, like that I used to give people for what to expect for that 24 hour period for the physical and the duck walk and the you know all the crazy stuff. And I can tell you some of the funny things that I've seen. But uh, this video is a little out of character for me. Normally, what I do is I teach people, hence the book, the No BS Guide to Military Life, how to build wealth, get promoted, and achieve greatness. I teach people how to build wealth through real estate, entrepreneurship, and personal finance while in the military. So when you leave the military, you can achieve financial freedom like I did. And that's the long and short of it. So if you want more content about like basics of the military stuff, you know, I'm just basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm filming these videos with the hopes that somebody who's thinking about joining the, the military will watch this video and then they will start learning about finances and VA loans and investing and all of that rather than being like me who didn't learn about it until I was like seven years into the Marine Corps. If you found this video helpful, please do me a favor and click that little subscribe button down in the corner, like the video and maybe even share it on social media so somebody else can get some help out of it. But uh, it's good to be back guys, have a great day.